Keeping up, right. Going to take you through some Weck method. One of the Weck method principles is this spinal engine theory, which isn't his theory. It's, I can't remember the guy. I think he's a Canadian author with a Russian name. But that, as opposed to what Michael Johnson says when we sprint, he says the arms, shoulders, and hips should stay neutral, and you just swing them and try to stay as in the middle as possible. And then you've got people like Usain Bolt, who, according to Michael Johnson, has bad form because he's swinging all over the place. And if he was able to channel it like that, he'd be faster. And there's a lot of wasted motion. All of that energy that should be going into the track is spilling out. The other option is maybe he's the fastest because he's doing this, right? He's allowing that. So even though there's more movement going on, he's sort of anchoring off of body parts as he's swinging and moving forwards. So essentially, spinal engine is that the ribs, I don't know it too deeply other than me just playing with it rather than like not in the science of it, but you can read a book called The Spinal, Serge Grekovetsky, that's it. Um, that the ribs kind of move with this infinity pattern and that's what drives motion. You can see this functional patterns always use the, the visual of the guy with no arms and no legs, the quadriplegic walking. So he's like got no arms and no legs and he's able to walk because of this spine where humans evolved, or whether that's true or not, but fish can move their spine sideways like that, and then mammals have this ability to move their spine in a 3D manner, and it gives us our freedom as bipeds. So, one of the first things to do, though, is to do it stationary, is to understand the end range of this spinal engine. So if everyone finds a wall, let's find a space by a wall, we'll pull this out in a second, and we'll just do the, one of his, his principles is the, the coil. What you're going to do against the wall is stand. This way, this way. This way. Yeah, so if your right shoulder's on the wall, your left foot's going to be forwards. Yeah. And you lean your right hip into it. Reach your right hand up. Yeah. And then you're going to pull your left elbow down to your hip and drive that hip, drive the left hip forwards and pull the left shoulder back. So there's rotation in this, in the spine. It's not just a side bend, there's rotation. We're trying to keep our head straight so our eyes are going to be level. We're not letting the head bend, we want to keep eyes on the horizon. And then really try to reach up with that right hand. So you're reaching up with the right and you're reaching down with the left elbow into the pocket. A bit wider with the stance, Jake. Uh, like a bit wider. Slightly bend in the front knee, yeah. And really try to get the elbow to the back pocket. Left hip driving forward, right hip driving down, or left shoulder driving down. And then reach with the right hand up. And lean into the wall. Really try to get a massive stretch on that right side and as much compression on the left. The more you can compress the left, the more you'll be able to reach up with the right and vice versa. So from the right shoulder to the right hip, make that gap as wide as possible. And squeeze, three, two, one, release, and just let that express. Give yourself a little rub. Do the other side. So this is kind of waking up that lower lat that drives this when we sink, drop the shoulders. We're just waking up the end range of the lat. So that's it, so left arm up, left hip into the wall, right leg forward, forwards, right hip back and down, or back and up. Left, sh uh, right shoulder, down and back. So we're creating rotation. It's not just a side bend, there's rotation. Reach up with the left hand. I like to put my palm facing out so you get maximum rotation. Uh, sorry, facing away. Put the palm on the wall to get the rotation in the shoulder. Really try to reach up with that left shoulder down with the left hip. And you can explore driving down through the heel might feel nice. Or squatting more might feel nice. But just exploring as we're opening that left hip and then squeezing. Remember, right shoulder back and down, right hip up and forwards, left arm reaching. Squeeze that for three with the lat. Three, two, one, and express it out. Should be a nice new contraction. Just waking up this, boom, that, that drive that comes down there, yeah. Okay, so that's the basic coil. Just one of the things they do, they call it a primer. So it kind of primes the body. And if you, you can do that before doing 
pull-ups and before bilateral stuff, but you're just getting deep there, deep there, and then you can go bilateral, and you'll have a bit, you should have a bit more. One of the, my favorite guys on Instagram and guys that I've met that's most impressive to me, eroding weakness, said the first day he did the, that coil, learned that, his bent press PR went up by like 30, 40 pounds, which is insane. And he liked the bench, bent press. The bent press is this one, so like a weird lift, but just a random testimonial. Um, so let's, let's start with crawling, because we'll build from the ground up. So we're gonna apply this to crawling. So we just start here, and we'll go in a line. First, we're gonna crawl. Head completely neutral. Do, do people, I'll help people if they don't know how to crawl. But we'll start, knee, we'll start hands and knees, really basic. So, crawling's like this, head in the middle. Um, and we'll just go in a line. Key, just the keys to crawling, just to go over it for those that aren't sure. One side's the same with the coil, right? You've always got a staggered stance with the feet, staggered stance with the hand, but you've got one side short and one side long. We're not, we're not crawling like this, yeah? We don't walk like this. In the, uh, you might be in your head in the beginning, but we crawl like this. Right, boom, boom. So I'll come around to help people, but yeah, just have that one side short, one side long, if you know what I mean by that. That shoulder to hip one side, the other side reaching out. Yeah. That's it, Jav. Yeah, that's it. And just really try to actually keep the head in the middle as you go for this. So like consciously like actually fighting the natural urge to go side to side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you keep your head in the middle. So you, there'll be a little, little natural coil, but just try to keep the head on a, uh, like a straight line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can still coil and keep the head on a straight line. Yeah. Uh, just join the back, Jose. Let's, let's allow people to come. I want to, we can get some speed going as we, as we go. Yeah. That's it. Once you get to the end, stand up, walk back. We're going to do a second lap on our toes this time. Just want, wanted to check everyone's got the technique down. On the second lap, yeah, knees off the ground. Stop there one sec, Keegan. So that leg should be back, for, uh, keep, keep everything but drop that leg, yeah. So this is your short side. So keep that hand there. I'm, hold one position. Hold, the, hold it there, right. So these two are gonna move at the same time. This arm, this leg. Move them both forwards, that's it. And then these two are gonna move, that's it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Still going forwards. This time you can pop into your toes. Still trying to keep Head a little bit neutral. Spine should be parallel to the floor, flat. Yeah. Uh, knees inside for this one, Nils. I know I didn't give the cue, but now I'm going to give it. Yeah. So knees aren't going to go outside. Yeah. Just awakening what's there from a child, from a baby, remembering what's there. Nothing intense, just feeling it out. All right. Finish that lap. I'll give you the next cue. Okay. So now we're going to allow the head to sway foot to foot. And this is something we'll come to with the rope flow and everything else, is that I'm going to allow, the head's going to be in front of the driving knee. We'll start on the knee. And I'm going to push forward and allow the head to go in front of that knee. And the, it, in the beginning, it might be kind of a diagonal line, right? In essence, when we're actually sprinting, there's a drive straight forward, and then as we become weightless, it's in the weightless moment that the, we shift. So it's forward, weightless shift, right? What this does, if, I, if you imagine my head's in the middle, and all my force is going, the start of the track's there, the end of the track's there, and my head's in the middle, which is a heavy object on my body, the heaviest, especially in relative to how far it is from the driving force. When I drive backwards and my head's in the middle, some energy is going to drive me that way. When my head's directly in front of my knee and I drive, every bit of energy that I put into that way is going to drive me that way. And then when I'm weightless, I can catch it on the other side, right? And that's what this allows us to do. So just starting on the knees this time, I want you to allow the head to go over the driving knee. And then we'll... Forward or sledging out? Like pushing forwards. Yeah. Pushing forwards. And then as you reach, it kind of 
naturally convenes the head over. But just experiment with that for one round. On the knees, this one, yeah. Yeah. Let's clip this up. That's it, Jake. Yep. Yeah. No, you're right. You're good. Just allowing the head to travel. And then as you drive back, pushes the head straight forwards. Alex, the, 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 the crawl's gone, Alex. Swap the, bring your left knee forward. Or, there you go, you're with it, yeah. So, what, 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 once you've done one lap, second lap will go on to the toes. And I want the knees to be a little bit narrower because we don't really run, just to keep it related to running. We don't run like that. We kind of want to stay a little bit in. Yeah, that's it. So the knee should be level with the hand or inside the hand. And you can lift the knees up now. Nils, if you want. Off, there you go. Like, l no weight in the knees. So you're on your toes. Yeah, keeping the knees inside though. There you go. Yeah, allowing the head to go. Okay. On the toes, Jake. Yeah, that's it. Allow the head to go side to side. Knees a little less wide, Guy. Try to keep the hips a bit more neutral, that's it. Yeah, have another go at that. That's it, nice nils. Yeah. Yeah, so again, just to reiterate, we're not doing, I know a lot of people done crawling in the past are doing big Edo crawls. We want to keep, think with sprinting, it's knee driving forwards. If anything, we can make it slightly internal. So maybe we do one more and just explore internal because it feels really nice. If people are into go to, this is a lot of their stuff, but they're all options for us, right? We can run head in the middle and still run fucking fast like Michael Johnson, but it's just another option. Um, so as I drive off my right knee here, I'm going to think internal. You see that? And then I land. I'm not outside. I'm still here, but there's some torsion going through. So we can think. I'm not certain of... That, but you do, I mean, off the line, you do see sprinters all do this. So, yeah, have an explore with some internal hip as we go. We'll just do two more full lengths and then we'll get up from the crawling. Just needed the cue, hey? Yeah. But it's inst you see instinct in people, it's like straight there. Uh, opposite Alex, you go in. You're doing a puppet crawl again. <laughs> Set yourself, one side short, one side long. So choose, just bring your hand and the knee together and then, there you go, there you go. That's it, so heel just falls away. Okay, last crawl and then we'll move on from the crawling. It's just to do now, you're gonna go between two. You're gonna go between head neutral, forget the, you can forget the hip thing, you can do whatever you want with hips. You're just gonna go between head neutral and head over foot, or head over knee. And just feel the difference in what's getting worked there. And if it helps to be on your knees, you can be on your knees, whatever you want. Yeah. Neutral, that's it. So, everyone feel that? What what's, you, what's the difference? Yeah, what are you noticing? What are you feeling? I have to think about neutral more. So yeah. It takes more effort. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. In the mind. A lot more core brace, eh? Yeah, that's the main thing, is you have to actually like really lock in, which might be good for some things. Why not train both? Like, might have the good brace and then also have the good fluidity, right? Most of us are used to the brace, but... Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's head over foot, guys. Fuck the rest. I'm just trying to be too, uh, you know, uh, yeah, political with it. But no, no. I, 
they're all options, and there are athletes that have done great at all at doing all of them. So, but most of us never have experienced head over foot and haven't played with it. Let's do a little bit of rope flow just to keep that engine reset groove. And when I say head over foot, this is that you can call it chin over knee, whatever it is. Like when we're crawling, it's putting the head over the leg before I take every step. So it, it helps. This is a real big wet, wax huge on it. He's like too angry about it, but I think he's onto something. I think he's got right to be to talk about it and to basically the scientists say that head should be in the middle. The scientists who aren't the athletes, and yet the athletes, whenever they run, you see them doing that, and you see the ones that try to fight it start to drop back sometimes. It's like so. It's this. It's this natural thing that like that exactly what I said. If my head's over my foot when I drive away from the start line, like that, my acceleration is going towards the finish line. If my head's here and I'm in the middle, there's leaking waste, there's energy side to side, which might have a, a time and a place for it, but just a new concept, a new, a new thing to play with. To grab a rope, let's just do a couple of travel drills with a rope, and then we'll carry on to explore this with a step up, because, yeah. Uh, I might have to have the big boy. I'll just use the, I'll just use the resistance band. You can okay, so. All right, I'll do this just for demos. Going to be down here again, underhand pattern. Going to just start to walk with it so it lands outside the foot. Just training. This is like giving us an exaggerated version of that, right? The rope's leading us to do a real big version. And then without it, it might just be a, a mini version. But we know the end. So, yeah, in your own time, not the lengths. That's it. You can go slow. Swing the rope slowly. That's it, Josh. You found it. Yeah. Underhand. Underhand. Weight with the foot, Andres. That's it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. You were good. It was just like half a beat out. That's it, Keegan. Yeah. That's it. Feel the ground, small guy. Really, like, get the tiger. Imagine you're a tiger as you walk. Yeah. That's it, Jose. Okay. Nice and easy. Just for, to mix it up, let's just do the overhand version of it then. A bit more aggressive. Shoulders can roll like you, you ain't scared of a motherfucker. Like you just, you know, you walk like that towards someone, I think. Most likely they'll back out. Same sync with the foot. That's it. Yep. The more you bring the rope towards your chest, the handles towards your chest, the more it's going to demand of the spine and the less it's going to be in the arms. So outside foot land there, boom, boom, there you go. Sink the one for one with the ribs and the legs. Now we're going to go. Uh, first yep. With this one, I have a tendency to go more and more towards flexion. How yeah. much do we try to extend the spine? Over, well, the overhand is more flexion, the underhand is more extension. But am I still trying to kind of elongate the spine? I don't mind. Like, do, do both. Yeah, you can, you can do it that, or yeah. you can, you know, you can just, just as a warm up, whatever. But good question. But the underhand naturally is more flexion, right? And then the overhand is naturally, oh, sorry, extension of the, the other way around. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so, let, final one, then we'll do matadors. Um, uh, most people have done matador here, right? It's just two beats on each side. But I want you to think about like taking a step in balance and trying to land in balance and try to move your energy forwards. I'm not, see here, I'm not going, this is you know, a great drill too. You can go side, but you're not ice skate. I want to go. Like every step is is forwards. Yeah. So just something to think about as you go. Trying to keep. Yeah, matador. Might need to shorten the rope on that side. Um, that's it. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. That's it, Jake. Nice. Yeah. And trying to keep the feet square as you go as well. Tall people, especially guy, might want to come left a bit. Tall people in the left lane, short people in the right lane. Yeah. Nice, Jose. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, and there's that fight to keep the foot neutral rather than it'll naturally want to open. Just something to think about with it. Uh, last, we'll just, I'll just talk about drag and roll real quick and we'll leave it for that now. No, you're good. <clears throat> so, things to play with. You can do the underhand version of that as a great drill too, right? We, we have more space, you're on some grass, you're warming up in the gym. Great things to think about. It's just, just we're really sinking the arms and the legs. Not only is there like a swinging action, there's like a pulsing action. There's this down and it's like the two of them together that make us drive. It's not just all leg power, right? Leg power is good, but if we sink the arms with it, we can get, it's that final, you could think of it like the Fibonacci, right? The most of it is the leg power, whatever it is. And then the final little bits are this kind of stuff, the cherry on top. With the, with the drag and roll, because it isn't, it isn't just right to say that it is purely underhand figure of eight, right? Let me, uh, pass me your rope, Jay. Underhand figure of eight is like a really exaggerated version of the spinal engine, but it's almost, it's, it's more than you need. The drag and roll is actually a more, like, I don't know what to call it, honest, but it's more a, a, another piece of the puzzle in terms of like shifting the weight from right to left with this action, right? But each side of the drag and roll only gives me one half of the picture. So as I'm going from, um, so I'm going anti-clockwise, as I'm going from right to left, it's that transfer, right? That, boom. If I reverse it, that's my left to right transfer. You can't do both, obviously, in one. Might not make full sense to you now, but as you explore the rope and play with applying it to running, that might make, it didn't, didn't kick in with me straight away. Chris said it to me, and like a few months later, I was like, oh, that's why he meant when he said the drag and roll is actually more for locomotion than the underhand. But I think they both kind of piece together. Okay, you can drop the ropes. I'm going to apply it to the two main things I see this work in is A, acceleration. When I've, if you're off the blocks, you watch any sprinter, their first steps are always head over foot. There's no way of accelerating without it and being any good. And for me with parkour, say I've got a limited run-up and I'm doing a running pre. Since I've learned this, if I'm, if I'm not, say I'm doing a normal run-up and I'm just like, without any awareness of this, I'm just, right, run, limited run-up for the takeoff. Now I know this, I'll set, kind of like a, a figure skater, right? They all have to start like, like that to drive off. It just gives you that first leg is stronger than if you're like head in the middle, what do I do? That first one is stronger. So that, that's one, acceleration. Two is going uphill. Hiking, running, when you're tired, everyone naturally starts to do it. They get tired, their body's over the foot because it's more efficient. We could do it before we're tired. So, everyone grab a step somehow. Might have to grab some of the, you could use a bench. One of these step ups, everyone grab one. I'll throw these out. Might have to share one between two people. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Share one between two people. Taller people on the red blocks. Maybe one more block. Okay. Pretty strong. Good. All right. So, again, same principle as we did. Imagine you're in CrossFit doing your step ups, head in the middle. Just do that. Give, give a three or four of them a try, both legs, just as you normally would without thinking if you're at the gym, someone tells you to do some step-ups. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know what's coming. Set your leg, kind of set the coil a little bit, head over foot, step up, reverse it down. Yeah. Yeah. 
side of the leg. Yep. Just, you're just setting the weight on that foot before you go. And then stepping up. Okay. How do we find that? You feel more rotation inside the hip. Yep. More uh, stress on the glute. Stress on the glute, yeah. More adductor involved. Yeah. So you're using the elasticity, like more natural elasticity of the body to do it. You rotate corkscrewing in and then you spring out. Yeah. Just, I mean, feels just more effortless than pure leg muscle and out of balance. We're setting the balance. And as we can do it, we'll let's ramp it up a little bit because we're going to add some weight soon. You're going to step through and just knee drive. And you're going to wobble a bit. But just, just to think about that weight shift, you can kind of put the head over the other knee, but stay balanced on that leg. Knee drive. It's like a Muay Thai knee, really. So, no, so it will. You'll explore, but the goal will be start core. Start, yeah, so it'll be as the weight comes, because then you, then you could put your foot weight on that foot then and go, right? So it's that, it's that peak. Remember we said when we were crawling, it's that when you get to the weightless moment is when the weight shifts or the head shifts to the other foot. It's like just as you're approaching weightlessness. Don't rush it, Alex. So it's not directly a, knee, a Muay Thai knee. It's kind of a step up, and then the knee comes. Yeah, nice, Charles. Uh, guy? Yeah. So I'm here. <coughs> Called in. Yeah. And think about... One thing to think about is the shoulder should be on a sort of rotation... How would I, I don't know how to say it, but like this, right? So my shoulder's swinging down like that, this is an exaggerated version, but you've got the shoulders swinging down to come through. So there's this happening, right? This is the, the sort of underhand dragon roll. Yeah, yeah, so it's just finding that a little bit. And I call this sort of fluid balance training because we're, we're, we're trying to maintain balance whilst in motion. So there's static balance on the spot and then there's keeping balance while you move. How's that feel, Jose? Great. Yeah? yeah? Nice. That's it, yeah, do a few on each leg. Okay. Cool, and then we'll take a break there. Keegan might want to have a few goes. Where do we go from here? So, let's add, everyone grab, we've got a variety of dumbbells in here. Everyone grab a dumbbell. 5, 10, 15 if you're brave, whatever you want. Or, or a kettlebell if you're comfortable with kettlebells. There's two tens there. Just one, one each, yeah, you just need one. 15. That's exactly it, bro. Yeah. 40. <laughs> 7.5, yeah. Uh, I'll just grab this for demo. Okay. Should we do it with a step? The choice now is, okay, yeah. Yeah, let's do it like this, let's do this. So you're gonna hold the weight kind of in your chest. This is gonna really, it just, heavy weight is instructive, right? You could use a five kilo snatch on a, if you just five kilos, and you could be out there and still hold it. As soon as you get the weight heavier, you have to be aligned, right? So it's the same with this. In the beginning, it's that to and fro between getting the technique and then loading it so that you can feel it more. But yeah, just in the beginning, you can do some step ups, five on each leg, thinking about infinity in, infinity out. So I'm not reversing, I'm continuing the flow, right? You see that? You're, you're stepping the same side out. Yeah, so you step the same side out. I'm just sort of flowing in because you can do that, but then I'm like out of sync. So I like to just go in, imaginary step. And then down. And underhand motion. Underhand motion, yeah. So if you want to give that a go. Sorry, I took yours. I'm going to wait. Yeah, take your time. Feel into it. Charles left with the 15. So it would be one up. Then the left comes down. And then we're back where we start. It should be one complete figure of eight. Yeah.
Nice, Alex. Cool that. Is that too heavy? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, you might be able to do it with a plate. Does the left foot come down? So you're going up. If you go up on your right, you come down on the right. The left can like touch, but just to keep your balance. But it, you can also do it without. Yeah, and then flow through. Yeah, and then step back. There you go. And then you're back where you started. And it's that. So try to keep the momentum and not go. You kind of went in and out. Steve, uh, so start cause. Uh, step your right foot up and set the coil. So you're here. Yeah, yeah. Elbow comes down and through. Now that elbow comes down and through. And then you step back. Yeah, so it's elbow down and through as you go up. Left elbow down and through. I'll just demo it one more time just to check everyone's got it. Most of you seem to be doing it good though. I'll do it on my left. So, I'm starting on my left. My left elbow comes down and through, right? My left elbow down and through. And then when I get to the peak, my right elbow, the weight shifts. My right elbow comes down and through. And then I step back. So this is like a hypothetical step, but it, it helps train our balance. Because really you'd be like that, right? Maybe we could do that in a minute. But yeah. Just do a few more of them. Keep it really close to your chest, Giles. Like you want it to be represent, you like trying to load the spine, like the center of the spine. Yeah. Let me see. We've got nothing else. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. And then you, are you stepping back on the opposite leg? So just keep it on the same leg when you go to it. Yeah. Let's do that. Swing through. There. And step back. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big step up. Giles has got the worst of both. He's got the big step and the weight. Can anyone swap with Giles real quick? Or just give Jake. Yeah. Just let's have a go with that. There you go. That's it. Yeah. No. So just keep it. Tight, keep it tight, yeah, you want to stay tight. The elbow, just notice the elbow, yeah, that's it, good. Elbow up and through, left elbow comes through, yeah, and then back, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and then you can have an imaginary one and then go again, exactly. Yeah. So for those now, feel free to step over the object now. So you can take, if you're on a small one, or you could experiment, you could do two steps through, right, with that, or you could do one step up, one step down. You can just experiment, play, boom, boom, yeah. But experiment traveling forwards with it a little bit. Yeah. And you might notice that it's synced on the opposite leg. It might be singing on the same leg. That's okay. Just keep the spinal engine going and just try to stay in balance. Would you say that we can make a step in the middle or because otherwise I will end up the other side? Show me. Yeah. Have one in swing in between. Yeah. So you can either change foot yeah. as you go, or give it one swing in between, like you said. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's all just feeling into the rhythm. Yeah. Try step over. Maybe go. Oh yeah. Do two steps. Do two steps and go. Over. So you're going to be caught on that side. If your left leg comes up, it's your right. It's your left elbow. So go left leg up, go left leg up like you were, and it's that side, yeah. What? So you're going to step up there? No, it's no, you're going to be at cord on that side. Yeah, that's the step up. Yeah, take a step, and then lo control, lower it down. Yeah. Nice guy, you've got that. Can I ask Giles and Andreas to swap? One second. Uh, swap, okay. stop step, sorry. Stop step. <laughs> and here, you can just go up, pause, down. When I say pause, you're still doing the spine. Yeah, step up, keep it tight. You know what, grab the 7.5. Well, yeah. Grab that. <laughs> so, choose a foot. Yeah, so step up. 
You're going to stay on, no, no other foot's going to touch the top of it but your left foot, right? Boom, and then go through and step down, yeah. yeah. And try to sink that control down. So I'll just demo it for everyone one, one time. Again, well, you could do it without the weight as well. Maybe the weight's too much as we're getting the pattern in. But the options here are, right, I'm coiled on that leg. I can go up, weight, lower it down. Right, and then I'm kind of counterweighting my leg and my right shoulder. So that just one more time. Up, weight, down. Or we go up, step, down. No real right or wrong, just feel into it. But yeah, if you can do it on, on a step, something to play with. There's just different sinks. In, in WEC, let me just say this. They, have it, they call it a near side coil and a far side coil. This is a... I think, it's that, I think it's a near side coil, where the same leg is forward as the shoulder's back. And then the opposite of that is that, which is like a baseball or a golf hit, right? Where we're kind of in this action. So there's two options. In walking, it's more this. And then in hitting, it's more this one. Backside, that's backside coil, front side coil, yeah? One's a bit tighter. So for walking, it's more focused on front side coil. Should have been a pause. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Okay. Last few goes of that, and then we'll move the steps away. Call it, right there, torso coordination, spinal coordination. We're learning. We can coordinate the arms, legs, the feet, but between the hips and the shoulders, there are four big pins there that we can learn to coordinate. And there's so much muscle in between them that we're learning to drive from and add to everything else that we're already doing. Yeah. Yeah, you feel the, it's like cogs. It's cogs, right? Yeah. Cogs working together. Shoulders and hips. That's it, Andrea, that's nice. Um, yeah, that's it, just okay. big steps. That's okay. it, then, yeah. yeah. The rotation around really helps me, not just being on one side, but around, like... Yeah, you know, like, like your shoulders are wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be yeah. the opposite way, but you can do that way. Like, oh, right. Like, around backwards. Yeah, it's a little less... Yeah, that way. Yeah. So when you step up, uh, do you have... Oh, I'll show you. Yeah. So I come on. Up. Up. But do I now... Or... You added an extra step. Yeah. But, but you... But, but... Yeah. The weight is on the... Feel it. You decide. You know what I mean? Like, what, does, what feels the most balanced? Like, I think there's two options. Two options, actually. Yeah. Cool, any more questions on that? And we'll move the steps away for now. Steps are just a great way to really feel this, right? You can go back to that if you want. Neutral, that'll do something for you. Another option, you wanna do a thousand steps and you wanna do it as efficiently as possible, I'd choose that option. Um, all right, blocks away. Keep the weights out though. He couldn't have missed. Eden's going around. <laughs> roller coaster, the best roller coaster. Okay. So, applying it to more weight training principles. I love it with a kettlebell. Um, yeah, let's do it with a kettlebell. But you can do it, we can do it with dumbbells because that's what we've got. There's a camera, so I'm not. So, look at something like the strict press. All right. How does this apply? Again, if you had to do your maximum weight or maximum reps for time or something, you wouldn't want to just do strict press. You'd want to, you know, push press. That's one extra dimension. Now this is an extra dimension. We're using this same... My hips, well one, it's, I'm rested on the hip there, so I'm on the bones. But I can, I've got all this freedom here, these limbs that I can swing using, using gravity and torso contraction to drive, right? So, so I've got this like 180 degrees between that elbow and that elbow. I can contract that as I drive up. Yeah, 
So just imaginary on the spot. And try to really, it's not just side side, there's a, a real like center line. We're trying to kind of hug on the center line a little bit. And would you shift your weight so that you feel this? Great question. Great question. Um, so I have two versions. I have one where I'll start on the same leg and I will shift the weight. Yeah. Feels good. Then you stack like through there. And then one where I start on the opposite leg. Call that one a monkey press. So then you drive, you get to drive down with that leg and up. But for, for the beginners, I'll start with this one. Grab a dumbbell. Go. Yeah, it's all three, yeah, it's flex and extension, rotation, yeah, okay. and side, yeah, the side flexion, front flexion, and back flexion, yeah. and then, because that's the infinity pattern, is all six spine directions in one, in one, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, uh, grab a dumbbell, try it with a dumbbell, and so, However you find comfy. And maybe we'll take it for a walk. Let's take it for a walk. Let's go. It always feels better to apply it. Grab a weight. You can change weights as you go. Giles, let's start with that. Heavier you go, the more you'll feel it. Um, the, the 16's all right once you've got used to the pattern. So it doesn't, might not be 16 exactly, but it is, yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah, so on the spot maybe to begin with, you just... Weight on the leg, you step, yeah, boom. So chest, always try to get it the center line, yeah, 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 lovely. Yeah. So the, Jose, just, uh, that's it, yeah, exactly, you've got it yourself. Good rotation, Jake. Nice. Yeah. So have the weight, drop this leg back, stay where you are, just drop that. Yeah, now drive out of that. Alex, same thing, so drop uh, your right foot back. And now, if you're gonna drop the arm, drop the left foot. Just keep the arm where it is, drop the left foot back. Yeah, so as you drive up, you're gonna step with that leg. There you go. Yeah. Is precision, precise training, precise posture training, precise torso training. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, the clunk on it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, make sure you do both arms. Yeah, so take the step or drop your right leg back. Yeah, and so yeah. as you step now, yeah. That's the main one, uh, Andreas as well. So, where the weight is should always be your front leg. Yeah. Step. Nice, Giles. That's it. Try to keep your head on the center line and your eyes should be level. So we're learning to turn the neck. Yeah. Yeah, that's right side, correct, brother. Yeah, it is, I love it with a kettlebell. The dumbbell's not quite as prime, but it's still doable with a, with a dumbbell. Right, let me explore the next one. Yeah. Okay, we can do the next one. Next one's good with a dumbbell too. Uh, you've done two sides? Yeah. This is my second round. Okay, side. all right, you do your thing. So... That's the press, let's do the clean version, because it applies to both. So, I like elbow to front hip for this. It like just connects that side, like it creates like a, a lynch pin on that side, so my torso's safe. And then you can use a little bit of swing or static. Clean, All right? So I'm shortened on that side, I pull up. And look at that, I've got all this, I can use my legs and I've got all that. And then what am I doing? I'm below it, like on the snatch, right? So as the weight gets heavier, 
I'm as efficient as I can be. All right, take a step. Yeah. Just have a play with that. Have a walk down the line. That's it. Yeah. You try to get um, the weight, drive that hip into, yeah, so look like we're under the weight, yeah, that's it. And then rotate the thumb in here, boom, and then up, yeah, boom, yeah. And then thumb in, that's it, Jows, yeah, correct, good, good correction, yeah. Better with a kettlebell. Yeah. 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 That's it, Jake, yeah, nice. So in between the feet, Giles, that's the nicest exaggeration you can do for the glute, but uh, in, in between the knee, there you go, yeah, yeah, that's it. Nice, Alex, you got it. So Jose, don't need to fold so much, try and keep it, try and keep your chest upright a bit more and have the weight between your legs. There you go, yeah, nice, thumbs in, good. That's it. I'll just give a quick demo with the kettlebells. So you could do it from the floor, like clean, or you could do it with a little bit of swing. I don't know. People here done much kettlebell? Any kettlebell? A yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's, it's the funnest because you've got, there's a real like snap through. So if anyone wants to, you've got, there's three 16s to play with. Um, and 24s, but I'm trying to push it, just get the technique. Right, yeah. That's it, yeah, nice, elbow to hip, yeah. That's it, go a little bit wider if you want, just for, for the sake of this, I don't mind being wide. Thumb in, yeah, and then clean racket, yeah, yeah, and then reverse it down, thumb in. And you can allow a little bit of swing if it helps, but whatever feels good. Yeah, a little more drop with that left shoulder and you catch it, try and get below it, like. On the way out. Yeah, as you get up, because that's nice there. Up, so like, I want to see, lift this shoulder high, drop this shot, yeah, and keep the hips in, yeah, yeah. You see this, this is where we're kind of trying to find that, like, shoulder difference. That's it, Nils. Yeah, it's big boy. Nice, Alex, yeah. Good. Yes, Jose. See, everyone's got the sink now. In the beginning, people go in the wrong feet. Everyone's got the sink now. You can feel it. It's, it's, it may feel slightly weird in the beginning, then it feels the most natural thing ever. Go on, Jake. Yeah, you've got to rack it. Keep that thumb to the sternum. Thumb to sternum. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Jake. Yeah. Give it your last go if you want on this row, and then we'll just have a quick drink, sip of water, and then we'll last couple things after this. Do you have landmine attachment? Yeah. No, we could just okay. jam it in the, in the wall. So the final bit that we do with this, I'll let Jake finish. Hold up there, I'll go on, do a, do a couple of steps, bro. Yes, Jake, you're the natural at that, yeah. Relax, because you're relaxing that other side, right? The weight's here, this other side can be relaxed. You're switching off, which is good. You like clean it, and then you relax. Yeah, we don't need the whole body to be tense. So, final bit. We piece them together, right? Clean, press. Reverse, down. Clean, press. Reverse, down. It's a nice way to go about it. So you have a start and finish it in the same position. Yeah. Every time you move, a ch you've, got, you've got bottom, middle, top. Every time you move between one, you take a step. Yeah. Bottom to middle, middle to top, yeah. take a step. Reverse it down. Close. Yeah. Once each side. Give that a go.
like one full length each side. Choose a weight that's good for you. Yeah, go lighter if you want. There's a 10 kilo here, might be nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Use your bounce. It's about finding maximum efficiency in the body. Opposite sink, Jose, with the legs. So uh, yeah, go from there, and then take a step as you clean. There you go. Yeah, take a step as you press. That's it, brother. Yeah, makes it a bit more, I don't know, the mind's in it a little bit more, just being precise. Looking good, Giles, great. Yeah, you're below that weight now, nice. That's it, Nils. Nice, bro. Give a little bounce when you press, man. Use your body. Use the opposite elbow. So do the clean. Yeah, do the clean and step. Left elbow really high, right elbow really high to the sky. Yeah, now drive that down and press. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Jake, yeah, let's see the other elbow now. So right elbow up, yep, yeah. uh, that's it. Right elbow up here, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. There you go, down and press, yeah. Nice, Jose. All right. Nice, guys, lovely work. Um, can I ask one favor? Just do that one more time for me and for my Instagram, please. <laughs> I've one, one thing. Whoever's up for it, just choose a side. Have a, have a second if you need it. Go on then, you guys come. Yeah, boys. Beautiful. Yes, brother. Cool, thanks. Okay, everyone... If you want to grab water, if you're done, you're done. I want, I, I'd be really remiss if I don't do landmines now that we're here. So I want to do, I want to do take the barbells. We'll find the spot here. We'll do landmines. For those that want to do landmines, if you're happy with that, your brain's fried, you want to chill, feel free to do that. But I must, yeah, get some water. Reconvene in five minutes. So all the same principles. That's the beauty. It's just about principles applied to different tools. Landmine is one of, if not the best tool, to strength train with this stuff. Um, it allows us to do this kind of unilateral, but it's not just unilateral, but unilateral, they call it rotational movement training because we're moving unilaterally, but we're rotating with it to the other side as we go. The same patterns, but what, the, what this allows that's different to the kettlebells and the dumbbells that we're doing is we can actually drive forward, it's kind of like a sled push whilst we're doing these patterns. So it's like when you're running, you're driving forwards, right? With this stuff, we're walking, we're very much on the spot. With a landmine, we can push like feet into the ground, you know, 10 toes deep in. Start to think about this stuff. So first move, let's just do, let's just do press like we did before. So you have elbow to hip and you're just gonna drive forwards and then step, and then reverse it back down. And you can have a little bounce. Just explore it, you can either step or snap. <laughs> and we'll just do a few on each side. Get used to the technique, and then we can add a little bit of weight, see how we go. So, grab a barbell. Are oh, you done it? Yeah. Sick. Uh, opposite feet. There you go. Then reverse it back down. There you go. Yeah. Uh, just stop. Just do the only the press for now. Swap the feet. Opposite feet. Yeah. Just do that, and then when you come down, you're going to swap feet again. So, yeah, exactly. So press and step. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to see the elbows should be touching the body. Preferably, like I like elbow to hip bone, so I'm like thinking about driving 
in here, and then boom, yeah. Yeah, and just do a few of them and then swap out for the people behind you, and then we'll add the weight to it. Might want to practice, practice the reversal as well, Niels, just because when it's loaded, you're going to have to what? do a press and then reverse it down, just because when it's loaded, you're going to have to learn to reverse it, yeah. But I like that you're thinking that way. Yeah, go again, uh, Giles, and really close, just I want to see that opposite elbow now lifted, so, yeah, there we go. The hand can be in here, something like that, yeah, and then press and bring that down. Yeah, elbow here, like, yeah, so this is, I'll explain why in a little bit. Nice guy, elbow in here a bit more, so like, hug the center line more. We really want to, when we load it, we really want to find the, hug the center line. We want to get efficient. We're already doing the clean, Andreas. No cleans for now, but oh, no. yeah, I know it's I know it's exciting to get. Okay, Jake. Uh, just yeah, well we're starting here, but if you want to do that, yeah, that's cool. So swap the feet. Yep, that's it, and then hop and press. Yeah, elbow in. Yeah, exactly. That's it. All right. Hey. Oh, nice. Okay. Everyone take a little break there. Should we go through? Let's go through all the techniques and then we'll add the weight and then we can keep the weights on. Okay. Uh, that's it. Yes. Well worked out. No, no, you're right. You're right. And then you swap. Yeah. Yeah. So we call it ABC, right? In kettlebell. Arm body connection. Really want this. As soon as we load it, Demo. As soon as this is loaded, you imagine that weight is going straight to the ground. The more I can be using my body intelligently to support it, if I'm out here, it's obviously going to be cranking my arm if I'm here. But if I can get really below it, and I'm, I'm fighting for this center line, and then everything, this side is below it again, right? Um, so let's do the clean. And then we can add some weight and do both. So, it's my favorite, this is it's just a clean. Driving a little bit forwards on the toes. And you see there's like a delayed, it's like up, and then I get below it, right? So I'm not just stepping across, go up, snap. Like the same with the snatch. Yeah? So we're up, and you see you've got all this extra time and space in the body that I can get below. Okay, give that clean a go. Whoever wants it. Nice one. Yep, well corrected. I love to see people correcting themselves now. Lovely, Andreas. Looking strong, bro. Opposite leg jowls. Oh, starting there. Yep. Uh, it could be on your heels off on both feet. So that you... Yeah, so you bring the foot back a touch. There's some weight leaning into the bar, yeah. You can be a little higher with the bar as well if you want. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Elbow up. Right elbow up. Right elbow up, Jaws. Yeah. It'll come. It'll come. There you go, yeah, yeah. Just, just lengthen that, lengthen that, right? So you get, yeah. Reverse it down. Swap the feet, swap the thing. Yeah. 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 Looking great, guys. Much better. There you go. You done both sides, Andreas? Yeah. Swap out when you're done, yeah? Looking great, though. This is a fun one, this. Yeah. Yeah, in your side, yeah. So you imagine, lynch, that's like a pin into the hip that's helping you lift this. Like, you're, you can use your... Uh, yeah, you can bring it here, right? It stays in the same hand. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, exactly. So just do the clean for now. I know um, Jake was doing both, Keegan. So swap the feet. Uh, 
Yeah, swap the feet. That's, that's it. Swap the feet. And then clean. And yeah, left elbow up if you can, or is it you got to tweak there? So when you land, yeah, no, so it's down to begin. And then when you land, it's up, yeah. Yeah, that's it, exactly. And reverse that down, yep. Yep. There you go. Yes. Yeah. And think about that 5% or 5% yeah, 5 driving into the wall. A little bit of forwards moment, like drive into it. Eyes on the, the pin at the bottom of the landmine. Do the press if you want, man. Now, once you've got it, now do the press if you want. Yeah, swap the feet and drive out. Feet swap. Yeah, you go. Yeah, press. There you go. That's it. Like a snatch. Fucking great, guys. Right, let's load it. It's going to teach us. We're going to find out. Ten. I reckon tens to start. Let's grab a ten each. Last ten minutes now. We'll just load this. Push through and then done. Oh, no, I was just thinking about that. I know, I'm thinking about it. Hey, Sarah. 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 Hey, Like fallouts or something. We're like in the vault. Just You're like in the gym in yeah. Montenegro. Yeah. You were doing landmines <laughs> leaning <laughs> for... Okay, so now, it's just the same thing. Do a few cleans, do a few presses, do a few both, right? Let's say three of each. Three cleans, three presses, three clean and presses, swap sides. All right, so you're going to notice, I'm like, there's a contraction happening on my left side, which is like the, what would you call it? I could be relaxed, or I could be on. This is relaxed. Right side's relaxed. Left side's contracted because the heavier that gets, like a, like a crane, I kind of think of this side's the crane pulling down and this side's like the, the weight hanging out, right? So I'm, and I'm here and I rise up and I've got all that space to get below. Yeah, don't have much more to say than that. You, The central line. We're hooking the central line. The fight. For that central line, we lose everything. There's always this. We're, we're really central. Explosive and you're like you're catching it. Catching it. Really like I'm getting below. I'm moving my body to be below. I just want to get it up, and I want to get below it yeah. with whatever I can. Yeah. Cool. Jump in. So three cleans. Then three presses and three cleans and presses. Take your time, no rush. Yeah. Elbow up. Hand can be in. Yeah. Oh, okay, like that. Gives you more rotation. Elbow up, left elbow up. Guy, when you, once you do the cleans, elbow up. There we go, yeah, much better. Spartan training. You can start, yeah, start with it hanging. Start with lift the weight. You have to lift the weight up like a few inches. Yeah, and then from there, explode. Explode up. There you go, yeah, exactly. Lovely guy. Get below it on the press. Nice, Alex. Get, start with it up, yeah. Start with it there, yeah. Clean. Get under it. Elbow up. There we go. Yeah. Reverse it down. That's it. Yeah. So it's like... I always forget that elbow. Yeah, yeah. 
It's, it's almost like it's the shoulder contraction and the rest is kind of relaxed, but it's just that. Yeah, 180 there. Elbow up, Jake. Yeah. Just helps you get below it with the other side. That's it, Andreas. Good correction. Elbow up. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and then you can do three presses and then three cleaner press. Not a deadlift, no. Okay. Yeah. Have it hanging. Okay. Yeah. Swap the feet, Keegan, when you land, unless you're trying to... So, there you go. Yeah. That's it, Giles. Good correction, mate. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Opposite feet, Jake. Lost the, you lost the feet. There you go. Nice, Keegan. Cool. Elbow jowls, a guy. Opposite, when you lift, there we go, much better. Huge difference, eh? And you're defensive. If I was coming for you, you got, you got a shield up. Hold on one sec, Niels. Just, I know it's fun. I just want to see if anyone's got any questions real quick. You, did, you, did, you had to go, right? You're good. Anyone got any questions on that? No. Feel good? I mean, Yeah, you'll learn to get beneath it. That's the balance. Like, the balance will come with that. Yeah. Um, final thing, if people want to do it, last, last bit. There's much more we can go to with this, but um, it would just be snatch. So you're gonna, it's going to be a clean and through. And then you can reverse it down, you're on the other hand. A little bit of elevation. Through. And then when you lower it, try to think about that center line, right? Be if, just to be efficient. So it's controlled, right? Boom, below it, flip. Yeah. Control. Okay, just for those that want to try the final thing. I know we didn't do it without the weight. Um, that's it, yeah. Go slow with it first time. Really feel it out. Swap your sentence. That's it. And drive palm through. That was it, guy. Nice, Jose. Swap the feet. Yeah. Just more explosive. My favorite, though, just the, the clean alone is the one exercise. If you do one landmine exercise and you work out, so I'd add the landmine clean. Take your time in the beginning, then as you get more precise with it, you'll be able to explode through it. Yeah.
More forgiving, what I like with this, it's a bit more forgiving on the shoulders. You don't need to have crazy shoulder flexibility to start. You can just get in there, get under it. That's it, Keegan, yep. Get under it. Okay, just to wrap it up, the clean for me, theoretically, my theory, and, and I guess it's part of WEX, is that ability to be on that one leg and drive with weight and shift to the other leg is what's going to give you explosive acceleration running drills. Do the two foot stuff by all means. The one foot stuff. So yeah, if you want to just feel, see how you feel walking and having a run now, like just think about think about that clean as you get. Let's let's deload, and then just have a little trot Are you around. No, no, we'll be good maybe. Yeah. yeah, he's got like there are American athletes that like they train baseball people yeah. and stuff, and it's like yeah, I've not done it personally, but but they've got stuff showing it. Like in baseball, it's stealing bases, right? Like it's having that. Yeah. Like if you can, if you can shorten your time, you can steal the base. Like the acceleration. They have that for baseball. Football, it's the 40-yard time. Yeah, and just think, just stand on the spot. Imagine you're about to go, like start a race. Coil over that, coil over your leg. So opposite way, both got. Yeah. You're coiled. You're in that clean position. All right, just get ready like you're clean and then just go, boom, explode, hip through, boom, yeah, that's it, it's going to be a bit funky, it's going to be a bit weird for a bit, but just, just play with it, yeah, imagine you're about to clean, like start uh, opposite way, so you're in, imagine you've got the barbell, you're driving forwards, you're, th you're th Throwing, whatever it is. Hmm. Yeah, call, but thanks so much. Yeah, oh, yeah. No problem, man. Right. Is it only the first step you try to make that motion and the rest is you know, I mean, it's not even like you need to make a motion, but it's just, it's getting... Used to acceleration. Yeah, it's, it's that feeling of like that... Like, yeah, that like... That, that hip through and that and that weight transfer. Like, you, I don't want you to change necessarily how you run, but just to deeply embed. Like, it will just come from something deeper of this. Yeah, just that feeling of that first step. Head in, head in the middle a bit, a bit more. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. That's it, Alex. That's it, exactly. It's that step, yeah. Boom, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and that's where the toe, toe <coughs> Weck got me to enjoy the toe drag. Like, I never thought about toe drag before, right? But you see some sprinters do it in the first few steps. Oh, yeah. They toe drag because it, it's more effort to, like, pull the foot up, then it is just to let it drag. Mm. So I always like that off the first step, is just feels like, then you relax on that side, right? Mm. One leg's driving, the other leg's relaxed. Mm. Yeah, it just feels fun. Maybe why we've got nails on the toes, I don't know, I've not figured it out yet. <laughs> That's how we would shape them off. Little shield, well just little shields on it, like we just run naturally like that. And it was just like a little protection. 
What? Is that an imbalance in the toes? An imbalance in the toes, what? Oh yeah, there could be. Yeah, I think there would. That would be. A, I think there would have been stronger naturally, hey. But also, that. All right, we're gonna wrap it there. Feel free to play. But yeah, thank you. I hope you got something just to take away, like a couple of things thank to you, play man. with. Yeah, no worries, man. All good. All right.